NBC presents Willard Waterman as the Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> Each week at this time, the National Broadcasting Company brings you a new adventure of the Great Gildersleeve, written by Virginia Safford Lynn. You, well, don't. Well, that's the way the bunny hugs. How did a bunny get into this? I was thinking about Easter. Oh, well, why didn't you say so? Then you let me. I let you what? I was hoping you'd let me go to the Easter sunrise services. Well, we'll all go. We always go. The birdie sings in the choir. Well, thanks for letting me stay up all night Saturday so we'll get a good early start. Why, we've never missed a sunrise service. Stay up all night? Who said anything about staying up all night? I did. D Leroy, we go through this every year. What's so fascinating about staying up all night? Night's just like daytime, except it's dark. But if I stay up all night, nobody will oversleep. No one's going to oversleep. Unc, I'm not getting through to you. The only way we can be sure nobody will oversleep is for me to stay up all night. Ah, there's one other way. What other way? Well, in this age of automation, there's a new mechanical invention, a startling new device that'll take care of it. No kidding. What invention is that, Unc? The alarm clock. <laughs> in just 60 seconds, we'll hear what's going on in Summerfield. But first, hear this. This is Clifton Fadiman speaking. Won't you join me every Thursday for Conversation, a program of civilized talk for civilized people about civilized matters. Our topics range from love to crime, from good books to good parties, from the problems of being an actor to the problems of being retired. And our conversationalists range from comedians to philosophers. They include actors, teachers, poets, scientists, prison wardens, and even a quiz champion. Conversation has won many awards in the course of its radio career. But more important, it's won a host of friends. To these old friends, and we hope many new ones, we're happy to announce that Conversation can once again be heard every Thursday over most of these stations. Watch your daily paper for the exact hour. For good talk on subjects you'd like to hear discussed by people you'd like to hear from, join us on Conversation every Thursday. Bertie, have you seen the... Well, what's this? Millinery shop? Oh, I'm making a new Easter bonnet for my little niece. Oh, fine. <laughs> How are you, Judy? Just fine, thank you. I guess this is going to be just about the prettiest Easter hat anybody ever saw. Yeah, and I'll bet you'll be about the prettiest little girl in the Easter parade. Thank you, Mr. Gilsley. Now, I'm not going <laughs> to mix up them ribbons, Judy. i got to measure it all. Did you want to ask me something, Mr. Gilsley? Oh, yes, Bertie. I was looking for the advertising section of the morning paper. Uh, oh, I must have used it to make a collar pattern for the new dress I'm making. Was it something important? Oh, no, no, Bertie. Hogan Brothers was having a special Easter sale on suits, and I thought I'd give myself a treat. But I can stop in there tomorrow. Hey, I got some swell ones for Mr. Peavy. Oh, hi, Unc. Yeah, my boy, I wondered where you were. Well, I went down to get some dyes and stencils for Easter eggs. Oh, Judy, I got these flowers and bunnies for you. Thank you, Leroy. Aren't they cute? Oh, that was real nice of you, Leroy. I'll hard-boil the eggs for you. But I expect you and Judy will have to attend to the coloring, because... I got to help collect Easter lilies and decorate for the services. And we got several choir practices, too. Oh, sure. Judy and I can do all this stuff. Well, I'll go finish my evening paper. Yeah, well, I'll put the stencils in a dry place, like the sideboard. Well, dinner will be before very long, Mr. Gilsley. Mmm, smells mighty good, Bertie. Aunt, by the way, what am I going to do about my new slacks? The pants are yay long. I'm not going to grow that much between now and Easter. With all Bertie's got to do, I hate to ask her. What'll I do? Oh, don't worry. Bertie's never too busy to find time to do things for us. Yeah, that's why I hate to bother her. Oh, say, Uncle, before I forget it, where in the Bible will I find the 23rd Psalm? Well, it's, uh, <laughs> it should be in the book of, um, uh, uh, why do you want it? I want a quote from it in my uh, Sunday school paper for Easter. Oh, well, uh, we'll uh, talk about that later. You know where to find it, don't you? Oh, yes, don't worry. I'll have it for you. <laughs> Thanks, Unc. I know I can count on you. Do I know where it is in the Bible? Well, do I? <laughs> yeah, I better look it up before Leroy finds me out. Well, where is our Bible? It's always kept right here. 
Oh, this is terrible. And at Easter time, too. Well, I guess there's just one thing to do. Find an authority on the subject. And I can't think of anyone better than our minister, Dr. Horton. Yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> Always enjoy talking to him anyway. Why, Mr. Gildersleeve, come in. Yeah, good evening, Dr. Horton. How oh, nice to see you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I'm afraid it's been a long time. Well, that depends on how you measure time. If your yardstick's the pleasure of seeing a friend, then it has been a long time. But if it's from a sensorial viewpoint... You'll have to be the judge because I haven't kept track. Yeah, yeah it's nice of you to put it that way. Well, sit down, Mr. Gildersleeve. Yeah, thank you. Say, you've redone your study, haven't you? Yes, indeed. I think it makes the room more spacious, don't you? Yeah, I like it very much. Did you do it just recently? Uh, nine months ago. Oh. Yeah, that does make it a long time since I dropped in from any viewpoint. Well, in any case, I'm glad you came. Oh, help yourself to those special Easter cookies my sister made today. Yeah, thank you. Mmm. Oh, they are good. <laughs> when my sister comes back from dying Easter eggs for the kids across the street, you'll be sure and tell her that. Yeah, I certainly will. <laughs> well, then, you don't think these things are too frivolous? Hmm? Easter eggs and cookies and things like that, I mean. Why should they be frivolous? Well, one of the things that brought me here was a feeling that people are getting so they take Easter rather lightly. Well, now, you must have a special reason for saying that. Yeah, yes, I do. There seems to be too much emphasis put on material things. New suits, Easter bonnets. Well, it all goes in together, more or less. Easter bonnets and new clothes are sort of symbolic. The spirit of renewal that's part of Easter. Yeah, I suppose so. The opening of buds, the blossoming of trees, green stalks thrusting up through the rich brown soil, the reawakening of the earth, giving promise of life. Miracles before our very eyes. Mm -hmm. So what harm could there possibly be in a new Easter bonnet? Well, it's wonderful for you to look at it that way. I'm almost ashamed to tell you the real reason I came to see you. Oh? You see, Leroy asked where to find the 23rd Psalm, and, and I couldn't tell him. Well, if you'd stop to think, you'd realize it's a book of Psalms, and, of course, it's the 23rd one. Yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't thinking, was I? <laughs> but uh, yeah, I didn't know whether it was the New Testament or the Old. Couldn't you have looked? Well, I couldn't find our Bible. That's what really upset me. Did you ask Leroy? Well... I was a little embarrassed. <laughs> well, the chances are that Leroy has been using it for his paper. Well, say, I never thought of that. It's probably up in his room. Yes, the whole thing isn't too alarming. There are a great many people here in Summerfield who would have the very same trouble. Yeah, I suppose so. But what do people do when their children ask questions like this? Huh? It's more alarming when the children don't ask. Oh, yeah, I, I see what you mean. The children are curious and interested enough to seek knowledge. There's no cause for alarm. Yeah, you know, I guess I never thought about that before. But I, I don't think we do enough talking about religious matters, especially with the young folks. Oh, I know the Sunday schools do a good job, but that, that's only one hour a week. Yes, that's true. We don't have very much time for discussion. Dr. Horton, I've got an idea. I'm going to set aside one evening this week to discuss these matters with Leroy. Yeah, and his little friends, if they want to come. Well, I think that's a fine idea. <laughs> this is kind of new to me. I don't know quite where I'm going. But as they say, uh, a thousand-mile journey begins with one step. And by George, I'm going to take that step. In just a moment, we'll return to the Great Gildersleeve. Hello, this is Danny Kaye. A few months ago, I returned from a trip around the world. And the purpose of that trip was my favorite subject children, sick children who won't survive unless they get help. I stopped to visit with these kids, to talk to them, get to know them, and believe me, folks, they need a hand. Badly. That's the picture abroad. And here at home, well, there are thousands of other boys and girls I want to talk to you about, youngsters who also need our aid. Each year, come Easter season, your local Easter Seal Society asks you to provide care and treatment for the crippled children in your community. The greatest wish these kids have is to walk and talk and live normal lives just like any other children. Give them that chance by supporting Easter Seals. Send in your return envelope or address a gift to crippled children care of your local post office. Do it today. <laughs> Mr. 
Mr. Gildersleeve, just exactly what are you trying to do? Well, I know what I'm trying to do, Petey, but I don't know exactly how I'm going to do it. Well, that's something new for you. No, Peavy. Yeah, I'm glad you could come, though. The youngsters have a lot of respect for you, and maybe together we can get across the importance and meaning of Easter. Yeah, that's what I'd like to do. Yeah, I'll help all I can. Good. Yeah, let's go see how they're coming along. Miss Gillsleeve, you think we should move the organ back a little? Well, perhaps we might try it. I think it should be closer to the wall. After all, your living room isn't too big, and you are. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't we push the Davenport back, too? Then we can put a couple of chairs right here, and uh, look, you can sit right here facing everybody, and that way we'll be sort of a half circle in front of you. Wouldn't that be nice? Uh, it seems to me the extra chairs should be over here instead. Mr. Gildersleeve? Yeah, just a minute, Judy. Well, why don't we try it and see, folks? Okay, come on, Piggy, give me a hand. Well, where do I get hold of the other end? Mr. Gildersleeve? Yeah, just a second, Judy. Now, uh, don't move it too much. Yeah, that, that's enough. That, that's it. Mr. Gildersleeve, could I ask a question? Oh, yes, Judy, I'm sorry. What is it? Where do you want me to put these Easter lilies? Oh, I'm terribly sorry. Now, let's see, uh, where shall we... Uh... Well, it seems to me the nice place for them would be on top of the organ. Oh, yes, then everybody can see them. I don't seem to remember ever seeing this organ before. Bertie rented it just for this special occasion. Oh. Wasn't that keen? Now, let's move that chair a little more, Piggy. Which way? Yeah, it was such a nice thing for Bertie to do. Well, music's always part of Easter. Well, even though this is just for the children, I must say I'm glad you didn't leave me out. Well, I think it's a real keen idea, and I think we ought to do it once a week. Well, let's see how we come along, shall we? <laughs> Want oh. me to answer it, Uncle? No, thanks. I, I think I'd better go. Uh, Bertie, if we move the organ a little more at an angle, we can all see the music right over your shoulder. Yeah, that's a very good idea, Mr. Peavy. Come on, Piggy, give me a hand here. Well, good evening, Dr. Horton. Come in. Good evening, Mr. Gildersleeve. Hope I'm not too early. No, no just exactly right. Have your hat and coat? Yes, sir. Thank you. I probably didn't need them, but those spring nights do get a little chilly. Yeah. Well, if you come on into the living room... <laughs> Of course, this is going to be informal because it's, it's rather impromptu. Those are always the things that are the nicest. Yeah, I, I think you know everyone here. Uh, Bertie Hello, and Bertie. her little niece. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Peavy mm -hmm. and Mr. Peavy. Leroy Hello, and his friend Piggy Banks. Oh, hi, Dr. Horton. Delighted hi, Dr. Horton. to see all of you. Yeah, now, shall we all be seated? Oh, Dr. Horton, would you like to sit well, over this here? This will do very nicely, thank you. Oh, <laughs> you, know, you know, you are really the one who should be doing this. No, no, indeed, Mr. Gildersleeve. This was your own idea and you're the one to do it. Tonight, I'm merely a guest and a very interested listener. Yeah, thanks very much. Well, all right, Uncle. I think we're all ready now. Well, uh, you know, I've been so intent on doing this, I didn't stop to consider just how I was going to do it. Yeah, I don't know where to begin. Well, if I might make a suggestion... Oh, no, please do. A nice hymn always gets things off to a good start. Yeah, of course. That's what we have the organ for. <laughs> yeah, how about it, Bertie? I'm ready, Mr. Gildersleeve, and here's one I'm sure we all know. Onward, Christian soldiers, marching as to war. ask something. Yeah, all right. What is it, Leroy? Well, something I can never get straight. When is Easter? I mean, one year it's one day, and the next year it comes on a different date. Why is that? And I must admit that I never get it quite straight myself. I've never understood it all. No, I never could figure it out. Could you tell us about that first Mr. Gildersleeve? Well, sure. I, I had to look it up, but I know now. <laughs> it goes back to very early times. The date of its observance was fixed at the Council of Nicaea, and it's the uh, first Sunday after the full moon occurring on or next after the 21st of March. Oh, oh so that's, that's it. it. Uh-huh, that's it. Now, now, here's another question for you. Where does the word Easter come from? Uh, gee, I don't know. Well, Dr. Horton, do you suppose you could tell us? Yes, the name was derived from an old Saxon feast day. 
It signifies joy because of the earlier rising of the sun and the beginning of new life on the earth. Throughout the world, even though people of different countries and races have varied ways of celebrating, all their traditions and rituals point to the same thing, an expression of faith in the glory of a new life. You know, it's wonderful to realize that the entire world joins in praise and joy. And it all becomes part of the story of Easter. And now, I'd like to tell you the story of the crucifixion. If you have any questions, you stop me. Hmm? We will, Unc. Go ahead. Well, after the Last Supper, you know the story of that. Oh, sure. Yeah. sure. Well, after that, Jesus was arrested, as he said he would be. And he was tied and bound and brought before a meeting of the council of chief priests and judges and elders and scribes. They were in session to decide what to do with this man, who they felt was arousing the people and uh, shaking their authority. Well, many witnesses accused him of many things. He healed the sick, he cured the blind, but there was no wrong in these things. Then what crime could they find him guilty of so that they might destroy this menace to their hold on the people? So they asked, Art thou the Son of God? And Jesus answered, I am. And ye shall see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of power. Well, to them this was blasphemy and sufficient cause for his destruction. So they led him before Pilate. I know Pilate was the Roman governor, but why did they take Jesus to him? Well, Judy, you see, the Romans were the rulers of the land at that time. And Pilate was the one who would have to pass judgment on Jesus if he were to be put to death. But Pilate examined Jesus and found no fault in him worthy of death. Still, the people demanded that he be killed. Now, there was another prisoner before Pilate, Barabbas who had committed murder. And it was the custom of the time to release one prisoner at the feast of the Passover, whoever the people desired. So, mindful of this, Pilate offered to release Jesus. But the people cried, Release Barabbas! Crucify Jesus! And Pilate, bending to the will of the people, washed his hands of the whole matter and gave Jesus to be crucified. Then they mocked Jesus and placed a crown of thorns on his head and led him to a place called Calvary where they nailed him to a cross between two criminals who were crucified with him. And Jesus said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. It was the sixth hour and there was darkness over all the earth until the ninth hour. And Mary, the mother of Jesus, stood at the foot of the cross and saw him die. will be back in just a moment. May we earnestly suggest that you attend church this Easter Sunday. Everyone needs the comfort and inspiration of religious faith, for it is faith which helps hold our families together, builds moral and spiritual character. And today, perhaps more than ever before, there's a need to turn to a way of life based on the enduring principles of religion. There are a great many programs of religious nature on NBC Radio, which you'll enjoy hearing this Sunday. Among them, The Art of Living, The National Radio Pulpit, Eternal Light, The Lutheran Hour, The Catholic Hour, and The Hour of Decision, conducted by Billy Graham. These are but a few of the broadcasts that will bring you inspiration and comfort, not only this Sunday, but on the Sundays to come. Of course, the Easter message will be the highlight event this week. We know you'll enjoy hearing them as a supplement to your visit to the church of your choice. And when you do go to church this Sunday, take the whole family with you. But, Doc, there's more to 
the story of Easter. I mean, the crucifixion's not the end. No, you're right, my boy. You're certainly right. The true story of Easter is the resurrection. And I'd like to read it to you as St. Mark tells it in his gospel. When the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, had bought sweet spices that they might come and anoint him. And very early in the morning, the first day of the week, they came unto the sepulcher at the rising of the sun. And they said among themselves, Who shall roll us away the stone from the door of the sepulcher? And when they looked, they saw that the stone was rolled away, for it was very great. And entering into the sepulcher, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, clothed in a long white garment. And they were affrighted. And he saith unto them, Be not affrighted. Ye seek Jesus of Nazareth, which was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. Behold the place where they laid him. But go your way. Tell his disciples and Peter that he goeth before you into Galilee. There shall ye see him. As he said unto you. The Great Gildersleeve is played by Willard Waterman and is an NBC Radio Network production, produced and directed by Virgil Reimer. Musical compositions by Jack Meekin. Included in the cast were Walter Tetley, Amanda Randolph, Olin Soule, Ralph Reed, Carolyn Jean Hill, and Dick Legrand. Now this is Don Rickles inviting you to listen again next week to another new adventure of The Great Gildersleeve. Music, variety, and fun. Here are the Bill Goodman Show, followed by two hours of drama in the afternoon every weekday on most of these NBC stations.